And if someone gets upset because of that, it's just too bad. And you got to lay down the law. If they don't appreciate that or understand it, then that's that. And you say goodbye, right? Right? Am I right or am I right? <laughs> We'd be getting up at 7 a.m. to do what? Sit around on a day off? There's nothing to do at 7. Nothing's open, right? Blinky, you're a complete idiot. Enjoy your band. <laughs> Before we get into the video today, I just wanted to apologize to any of my visual style viewers for the what looks like the quality on this first clip. This clip is from one of his DSP throwback style reacts. And in that layout, his camera is absolutely tiny, but I didn't want to include whatever else he had on screen because it wasn't relevant. So we are just super zoomed into his camera. And that's why it looks as bad as it does. I just wanted to clarify before anybody thought that their quality had dipped or that the clip actually looked like that. It's just because we're super zoomed in. It won't be like that on the other two. But enough rambling. Let's get into the grave dancing, specifically on the grave of One Minute Man. How do I feel about big tippers getting upset and not, not being able to control me or the topics I talk about? Listen, it's this simple, okay? The rules apply to everyone and always have. It's never been any different. I've been doing this for 16 years, all right? But that's just fundamentally not true at all, though, because there's so many of these dents in his chat that are constantly getting preferential treatment, people that are constantly breaking the chat rules that don't get moderated or get brought back because they emailed him apologizing behind the scenes. So you don't even have to look at people like Derek, who is constantly spamming chat and being obnoxious. You don't have to look at a person like Kirk, who was openly being racist how many times and was constantly being unbanned because he sends DSP a dollar every once in a while, because there's so many other people who are doing things as simple as bringing up detractors that are against the chat rules and it doesn't matter. But I guess that's what happens when 80% of your chat is LARPers. If you actually enforce the rules the way that they were supposed to be enforced, there wouldn't be anybody left. And not once ever in my 16 year run as a YouTuber have I let someone who contributes control me or my content. All right. If there's topics that I feel are off limits or I don't want to talk about, I'm not going to talk about them. And if someone gets upset because of that, it's just too bad. And that's just outright untrue as well. Because how many times did we play games that DSP genuinely didn't enjoy and most of his audience didn't enjoy as well simply because the pay pigs wanted to see the game completed? Apparently that happened very recently in Baldur's Gate 3 if you believe what he says. And if you want to take it to the next level, for how many years was he doing things like Patreon's choices where they were actively picking what games they wanted to see simply because they were donating to him every month? That is quite literally the definition of allowing your pay pigs to decide what content you will and won't be making. And everybody knows when it comes to talking about subjects that you're not interested in talking about that if they give you enough money, if they pester you enough, inevitably you will talk about it. Even if you do wind up addressing it in a very aggressive and ill-mannered way. I don't think that it's even possible to count how many times that you have been baited into talking about drama that you supposedly didn't want to talk about. So either you were lying then and you did in fact want to talk about it or you're lying now and you constantly talk about things that you're not interested in. Which one is it, DSP? Please pick one. You you know, it doesn't even matter if it's uh, a detractor, if it's a actual, you know, viewer and fan of my content, if it's one of my biggest supporters ever, it doesn't matter who it is. Everyone has to abide by the same rules and I retain the control over my content, period. You know, if I don't want to take it in a certain direction that I feel is going to be negative for the channel overall or the stream or the viewers, I will not do that. All right. So it's that simple. And, you know, sometimes it happens where over the years, you get a change in attitudes, you get a change in all kinds of stuff. It's happened many different times over the years, if you haven't noticed. Um, it's not just one particular person. But it kind of is this one specific person this time, isn't it though, DSP? And why do you think that it is that this continuously keeps happening to you? Why do you think that there's constantly people coming out of the woodwork that support your content and think that they're gonna start running things and telling you how you should be doing it? Because while I'm sure that this does happen to other content creators, inevitably some whale is going to think that because they give somebody money that they deserve to run the show. It definitely isn't something that I constantly see other content creators dealing with or even talking about, which indicates to me that it has has to be something with DSP and the way that he makes his content or the relationships that he has with his whales. But I guess that's expected when somebody like One Minute Man gives you $8,000 in the span of a single year. I think that any reasonable person after spending $8,000 would feel entitled to at least something, maybe even a topic that they want discussed to be discussed. But that would be insinuating that any of these dent style whales are exactly a normal human being. And we all know that that is the furthest thing from the truth. So listen. What it might very well be is that at one point, 
someone really likes my content and so they want to support it. But then over a course of several years, maybe they fall out of love with my content and they don't like it as much, but now they want to participate in a different way. So now they want to stir conversation, whatever it could be. But the truth is, it's never going to change, okay? It's always going to be uh, the same. Nothing is going to, to change around here, all right? And I know when he says that nothing is going to change around here, he is very specifically talking about the idea that nobody's going to change his content for him and that they're not going to steer him in any sort of direction. But that statement really does go for his entire channel as a whole, doesn't it? Because even every new gimmick he has is just an old gimmick with a new coat of paint slapped on top of it. Very sloppily, might I add. And while in this instance, I don't want DSP's content to move into the political sphere, and I'm glad that he immediately shut down that prospect coming from One Minute Man, they're definitely have been some ideas given him from the dents in his chat from his pay pigs that I genuinely think would have been a good idea. I can't think of a single one right now off the top of my head because they've all gone by the wayside and been lost to history, but there definitely have been some in the past, some ideas that I heard coming from the people that give him money and thought, you know what, that's not the worst idea I've ever heard and would honestly be refreshing for DSP's content. But I'm sure none of those people were around and they were probably even banned just giving him the idea because of course nothing is going to change on DSP Space Gaming. You just heard it yourself from him. You're not going to see me being completely controlled uh, by anyone or anything, any force, right? It doesn't matter if it's uh, a particular line of conversation, a, que a question, whatever it may be, right? Um, you know, it just is what it is. That's how I am, too. Like, you know, I'm not going to be favoritistic towards any party or parties uh, because of stuff. You know, I mean, how many times has Kirk asked to be unbanned? And I said, listen, even though you support the streams, I'm not unbanning you. You've violated the rules too many times. If you want to come back as someone else that I don't know it's you, that's one thing. I can't stop you. But I'm absolutely not going to unban you. I'm not having you come back when you've broken the rules so many times and you refuse to change. So that's it, you know. You got to put your foot down at some point. And that's how it is around here, you know. Is everybody supposed to applaud for you now, DSP, that you've finally done the right thing after unbanning him, what, 10 different times or so? Because it was made very clear after the first one that he had no intention of changing, and yet you continued to unban him despite everybody in your chat hating him. This isn't a win for you. This is just yet another example of somebody that should have been gone a long time ago. And despite you not unbanning him, you continue to take his money and even go out of your way to read the messages that he sends with it as if it's some sort of dunk on him. So sure, he might not be able to type in the chat freely, but he can absolutely pay you a dollar to say whatever, and you typically do. It's a very rare occasion that you don't, and even when you don't, you manage to say that you're not doing it, which is just announcing that he's there and giving him attention. So I hope that you guys like the streams with the fact that I don't allow them to constantly be derailed with people who want to take it that way. Particularly, you know, some people want to take my content in a very political direction. I outright have stated I don't want to do DSP politics, which, by the way, if I do it, it would not be called that, okay? It would be called something else, and it would not be on YouTube. It would be of another format somewhere else. But if I ever get into politics, it would not be here. This content is something I've done for 16 years that I don't want to jeopardize simply because I want to talk about a different subject matter, okay? But what did you expect to happen when you outright told everybody in your audience that that was content that you were interested in maybe doing in the future? That those are topics that you are genuinely interested in and have things to say on? Of course, some of your audience is going to want to hear some of those things, and if some of them are going to want to hear those things sooner rather than later, they don't want to wait. Probably a poor choice of words given his strange aversion to anything sexual, but nonetheless, he practically asked for this to happen and then got upset when it actually did. Much like everything in his life, he has no one to blame for this but himself, and he really has no business talking about these topics to begin with. So, yeah, like, that's that's the deal. Like, I'm not going to put up with nonsense uh, from anybody. And, you know, people, I've noticed over the last, I'd say, several months, certain characters and people have been trying to push me in directions I don't want to go, and then they get upset. Oh, why aren't you reading this or reading that? Because I don't have to. Because I've always had the ultimate control over my content. It does not matter uh, you know, how much you're contributing, I'm not going to say certain things or do certain things in my content that's going to be inflammatory and detrimental to everyone. Um, and if people get upset about that, oh well, I can't stop them.
And I just want to say for the record that I genuinely think that DSP did do the correct move in this instance. While he was definitely stuck between a rock and a hard place of his own design, I think it's within his best interest to not say these inflammatory things and not take these sides on these weird political stances. But while I think that he made the correct move in this instance, I do once again want to point out that this is entirely his own doing. He lost a very major pay pig because he frequently talks about political topics and goes on political rants but wasn't willing to engage with somebody else's political thoughts in a message. If you needed any more evidence that DSP is not cut out for the political space, I mean look no further, the guy read one political message and immediately didn't want to talk about it anymore. I hate to break it to the guy, but I don't think that that's how that space actually works. You don't just get to shut down and ignore everybody else's ideas because people are going to push you on things, especially in that space. You know, it's like I've always said, these my content on YouTube is like a revolving door. At some point, people like me, some people they don't. Or they like me at one point, they don't like me at another point. Whatever. You know, people change, I change. There's nothing you can do about that. You know, it's not the end of the world if you say goodbye to some people. You say hello to new ones, right? That's just how it is. So, I appreciate, you know, when people support me over time. I really do. Um, it's nice to have someone who are consistent supporters of content. At the same time, when you notice a change in attitude and when you notice that people are trying to be more and more demanding or controlling and you gotta lay down the law, if they don't appreciate that or understand it, then that's that, and you say goodbye, right? Right? Am I right or am I right? <laughs> the multiple rights and nervous laughter just come off like he's trying to convince himself that this is a true statement that he's saying. That not only is he trying to lie to the audience and convince them that he doesn't care whether these people will come and go, but he's also trying to convince himself because One Minute Man was such a major whale for him. But of course, DSP is totally unbothered, you guys, because he's your fearless leader and he knows that the money will come in one way or another. It has to. It always has and he thinks that it always will. That's, that's my attitude anyway maybe there's people who are so beholden i mean let's be honest there's youtubers out there that literally just sit there and let people degrade and insult and bemean them for contributions because it's the only way they can make money i'm sorry did you say bemean and bemean them for contributions because it's the only way they can make money yeah, he absolutely said bemean instead of dumbean, so that's pretty cool. But doesn't he technically do that as well? Because he absolutely receives super chats and tips with horrible messages in them from detractors, and there's no way that he's refunding that money. So regardless of whether or not he actually reads them out loud, he is still being insulted and demeaned for money. He still falls into that category. He's no better than any of these other people. In fact, he's probably worse because at least those people are getting their bag and know what they are. Whereas DSP seems Seems to be in denial or at least complete delusion. So much so that he doesn't think that he is a shining example of exactly what he's trying to describe. Yeah, that's not me. I actually make content that people like and they support it. So I'm not going to then be, you know, have my stuff going away. I don't want it to. You know what I'm saying? So there you have it. All right. And it hasn't changed or anything. It's, you know, it's just the same attitude. It's always been the same rules. It's just, I guess, at some point, some people think that they don't apply to them. I don't know why. There's definitely, it's, my, it's not just one person. This has happened many, many times over the years. And not once has he ever stopped to wonder why over the years so many people have thought that the rules no longer apply to them when they give money. Well, I can tell you, DSP, from watching your content through detractors for years, it's because when people start to give you money, the rules no longer apply to them. Until, of course, they do again because they specifically get on your nerves. And that was inevitably going to happen to One Minute Man after he became vocal during the Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough. You could see DSP's demeanor shift after he started seeing that he was actually leaving messages messages with those daily tips. So frequently you could see DSP pre-reading these messages from his long-term pay pig as if he didn't trust him or something. And then when he did eventually read them, you could hear in the tone of his voice that he just was not interested in what they were saying and was outright annoyed. But it's life, right? I'm good. I'm happy. I'm continuing on positively. As you notice, I'm not sitting here uh, freaking out about anything. We're having a good time, right? So I don't, you know, I don't know why, why drama channels of course want to latch on to drama and make drama I, there's no drama here everything's fine i've been having a, a good time you know a, a, as normal there's nothing that's changed everything is, is uh perfectly having a you know fun and under control i don't know why these idiots want to lie about stuff because they do constantly but you know that gets them their clickbait so don't watch their shit and just come here and relax that's all i can say you know
So if you ever needed any sort of evidence that DSP is not actually in financial straits and that everything that he says about him being so low on funds is just a lie, look no further. Because any person who is low on funds, any person who is in financial straits would absolutely be concerned that $8,000 in a year is going to be completely gone now. $8,000 is quite a bit of money to just be out all of a sudden. That's $25 every single day that he just no longer will be receiving. That's of course if you believe what DSP is saying and that he's totally not worried about it and everything is cool. But now that we've done the grave dancing, let's address the moonlight. And by that I mean specifically the time that we do our streams. So here's the thing Don Fanucci says I've ever, ever considered started streaming earlier. Here's the deal. Could I stream earlier? Yes. But sadly it would just throw my whole household into disarray. I stream at 10.45 a.m. is when I turn my stream on, correct? Some days a little later, but 10.45 is the sweet spot. And I just want to say before we actually start getting into this that I've always found the times that he picks to stream as very strange. Because aside from the very specific west coast of the United States, I don't know when his stream schedule actually works for pretty much anybody else. And for all of my audio style listeners, I do have some visual aids to help along with this. So as you can see on screen, I have Pacific Time set to 10.45 a.m. when DSP says that he starts his stream even though he has like 30 minutes worth of pre-roll. That's besides the point. And you can see just how kind of a strange time that is for every other part of the world even in the US because I would imagine that the best time to start a stream would be either slightly before people start going to work so they have something to listen to on the way in during about lunchtime hours so that people have something to watch while they're on their break or as they're getting off so that by the time they get home they've already listened to the pre-stream and can sit down and actually enjoy the gameplay but that just doesn't appear to be the case when it comes to DSP's first stream it's such a strange time all over the world in in fact, it appears to me that the most suitable location for DSP is actually in Europe because it would be 6.45 p.m. in London, it would be 7.45 in Berlin, and it would be 8.45 in Moscow. A completely reasonable time to be expecting people to be looking for content online to engage with. But if he were to just start his stream a little bit earlier, let's say at 9 a.m. his time, you can see how all of these times become so much better. Pretty much all across the United States, you're going to be catching people going on break, whether that be a smoke break or a lunch break. In Europe, you're going to be catching so many people on their way home, and then by the time they get home, they can sit down and watch the gameplay, exactly what I was talking about. And if you want to give them some slack and say, well, 1045 isn't that bad, it kind of works out for people if you look at it in a weird slanted way, sure, I guess. But the real problems begin to crop up when you take a look at his night streams and when he decides to start those. So he starts at 6.45 p.m. his time, which in the United States does kind of work out for some people as it gets later into the night. Night, but they will only be around for a couple of hours maximum out of a three hour stream, inevitably leading to less and less engagement as the stream goes on. And if you look at any of the European countries, it is just a very terrible time for them. Meaning that all of the people who would have really had the best experience when it came to the day stream are going to completely miss the night stream entirely. And that's feedback that he's actually received quite frequently when it comes to his European fans. I recall several times European dents super chatting or tipping DSP and letting him know that there was just no way that they could ever see any of the games that he plays on the night stream because it doesn't work for them. If he were to do a similar thing in this situation, it would also work out in his favor. If he were to dial it back from 6.45 his time to let's say 4 p.m., again, you can just see how it lines up so much better across the U.S., as well as still being able to catch some of the more night owl style individuals that are going to be located in Europe. And if anybody is wondering why I'm specifically only talking about American audiences and European audiences, it's because I think that is the DSP's main audience, that there is less likely to be any sort of language barrier, and those are the times that he already kind of works for. But now that we've gotten my time critiquing out of the way, I really appreciate you listening to that. It's something that I thought really hard about during this segment. Let's listen to why he couldn't possibly start his stream any earlier, despite him making his own schedule. Um, you know, this gives enough time so that, like, my wife can get up, get ready for work or whatever, and I'm not disturbing her, basically. She can do what she needs to do in the house, and then you know, get to work or whatever, and it's fine. Um, it also allows for the fact that it's kind of a normal schedule of getting up at a certain time and getting, you know, when I have a day off and we're going to have a normal day, we have to be able to be up when people are having breakfast. We have to be able to go out and do things when people are doing things. And you know what I mean? You have to have like normal business hours to have a normal life. And we've had that, thankfully. 
why does he need to be awake when other people are out and doing things like eating breakfast? The guy leaves his house once a week. If it really comes down to just needing to be awake during business hours on his day off, he could just change his schedule for the one day, couldn't he? I'm a schedule style individual myself, but if it was going to benefit my business to be off of schedule from other people, then I would totally do it. And I think that that's the expectation when you're your own business owner, but apparently not for DSP. It also doesn't make any sense because I think that most businesses open up at about nine o'clock. So if the entire point of his schedule is that he needs to be awake during business hours, you would think that he would already have been awake and ready to go starting at about nine o'clock, which is when I'm asking him to start his streaming. And the last question that I have for everything that he just said, how light of a sleeper really is Cat if being multiple rooms away with the door closed and just talking is going to be waking her up? It all just sounds like excuses if you ask me. Um, if I were to start earlier, like let's say I, I wanted to start way early, I could. Hell, I could start broadcasting 7 a.m. if I wanted. And that would wake up the household. That would wake up my wife at 7 a.m., which of course she doesn't want to be awake at 7 a.m., right? Remember, when I stream, my voice carries through the house. I have to have this door shut, and even then you can hear me talk, but at least it doesn't boom and echo, right? It's not like this is a quiet job that I can just sit at a desk going, T -t 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 -t. you know, I'm making noise the entire time that I'm streaming. So if I get up early, my whole house has to get up early, which is kind of unfair. I don't want my wife getting up at 7 a.m. for me to stream at 7, right? Well, 7 a.m. is an arbitrary time that you picked. I'm asking you to start at 9 a.m. because I think that that would suit the majority of what I presume is your audience. He also just outright acknowledged that the noise is minimal once he closes the door. If he was really that concerned about it, he could just move his microphone closer to his face, which it's supposed to be anyway, and just talk at a reasonable volume instead of shouting into the microphone that is like three times as far as it's supposed to be. And by the time that he would actually start gameplay, again, if he started at 9 a.m., I'm sure Cat would have been long gone and it wouldn't have been a problem if he started to get a little louder in frustration. But of course we had to go immediately to an extreme, 7 a.m., which apparently is super early for DSP and everybody's still sleeping, which is just wild to me because even on the weekends, I'm not asleep at 7 a.m. Um, And like I said, in addition to that, that would throw off our entire uh schedule for like our days off where we'd be getting up at 7 a.m. to do what? Sit around on a day off? There's nothing to do at 7. Nothing's open, right? So... I mean, you could spend time together in the morning. You could enjoy your coffee together. It would pretty much be the same thing that you two do at night, but instead of staying up till 1 or 2 a.m. and going to bed, you would instead just be starting your day and going to the places that you need to go to. Hell, you could even use that time in the morning to actually be productive and do things around your house that are supposed to be being done in the first place. It's astonishing to me that DSP doesn't see the benefits of actually waking up and being more productive throughout his day instead of slacking off at night and using his extra time is complete relax time. I shouldn't be shocked by this. This shouldn't be news to me. I know all he wants to do is pull Hogan's and do nothing else, but I'm shocked nonetheless because I don't know how anybody can be so unproductive. So we have our schedule in line with what would be considered like a normal day of business hours. So when we have a day off, we can have all our appointments and the things we need to do during the hours when everything is open and all of that. You know, here's the thing. If I did not, uh, if I did not have a family, if I was not married, if there wasn't a household here, right? If it was just me, I could hold whatever hours I want and I could stream whenever I want. And I would have pure flexibility to do whatever I want. But that's not my life anymore. I got married. I have a life now with a family and other people I have to worry about and a cat that I don't want to screw with. You know what I mean? No, I actually have no idea what you mean because I have four cats and let me tell you, all they do is sleep all day long or they're playing and they do not actually care when their schedule is interrupted. They'll just kind of figure it out, dude. Cats aren't all that picky in reality. They're actually one of the easier animals to take care of. I don't know why he's constantly acting like Jasper is literally a child that not only needs to be watched all day long, but also can't have his schedule changed in the slightest. Also, isn't DSP the breadwinner? Isn't he? the person that's bringing in the majority of the money. I don't imagine that Kat's second income is exactly doing all that much. I mean, she does work retail and only part-time. Again, you would just think that if this was going to benefit his business, which I genuinely think that it would, that he would be willing to try it, that he would be willing to try out different stream times and even potentially mess up his wife's schedule so that he could continue to provide for his family, quote unquote. Again, assuming that Kat is genuinely that light of a sleeper or that he couldn't change his setup 
up to accommodate for speaking at a lower volume as to not disturb the rest of his household, which he absolutely could. So both of those are stupid ass assumptions that we shouldn't even be going with, but we could. I have these things going on. So I have to be in line with that kind of stuff. Okay. I can't, I can't just be, oh, it's just about me, me, me and my streams and my business. It's about our life together, our stuff going on. You have to be, uh, you know, uh, thinking of that, conscious of that, right? Sadly, a lot of people are just so fucking self-centered in life. Oh, I'll just fucking do whatever I want. Wake up the whole house, make noise and shit, 7 a.m. Uh, no, that's not going to work. That's not going to fly. You know, for my family, I have neighbors as well, you know, and to say, am I loud when I stream? No, not for the most part, right? But if people are making loud noises at 7 a.m., <laughs> you're going to be upset, right? <clears throat> And it scrolled past now, and I'm not going to go back and catch the name, but somebody said in his chat, you're both adults and the cat doesn't care. And I really couldn't have said it better myself. I used to work in off shift. I worked second shift, which is very strange hours for most people getting off at 11 PM. At no point was this an actual issue that I ever had to deal with. On days that I needed to be up earlier, I just got up earlier. On days that I needed to be awake later, I was just awake later. And at no point did my girlfriend ever have an issue with this because we just figured it out. When you're both both adults, you can just make things happen. And some days you're going to be more tired and some days you're going to get more sleep. That's just how it works sometimes. To act as though this is some end all be all and DSP couldn't possibly try something new or change his schedule at all is insane. But of course, leave it to DSP to find literally any excuse to not change. And as of for streaming later, I don't even think that would work because already I'm told that my late night streams are too late. Like, that's actually why I stopped doing midnight releases. If you remember, when I was in Connecticut, I would do midnight releases frequently for new games. But as new games started coming out here and I started covering them, people were like, nah, it's too late. Like, like I would do the stream and I'd have less viewers than a daytime stream. If for a new release, hype, midnight release, no one would show up. So I stopped doing them entirely, you know? I mean, it's almost as if you actually moved into a less convenient time zone for the majority of the world or something. If you want to be fair to DSP, you could say that he didn't take that into consideration when moving because he wasn't live streaming at the time. And I would be inclined to agree with you, but I do know that live streams were something that was going on at least in 2014 when he decided to make that move. If he gave it any forethought, if he actually thought about his future as an online content creator, live streaming is something that was in his forte and he should have taken into consideration consideration but like i said that would require forethought and of course dsp is more of a three thought kind of a guy excuse me <clears throat> that's correct as well the blimp says plus remember you're doing six days a week it needs to be sustainable if i was streaming three days a week and i had giant days of 7 a.m till midnight right three days a week okay that's maybe better but i don't i do six days a week man i, I do a lot of content it's got to be more consistent. You know what I mean? Again, it's kind of, for me, it's like a nine to five job is how I kind of treat it. So that way I can have a normal life outside of the streaming. If I had a weird hours and shit, then I wouldn't have a normal life. I wouldn't have a normal sleep schedule. I'd be all fucked up. <laughs> I just want you to think about the sentence that he just said. He treats this like a regular nine to five, yet he starts at 1045 instead of nine. I don't think that makes any sense, brother. He also went out of his way to say that if he started any earlier, he wouldn't have a normal life. He would have a weird sleep schedule and a weird schedule in general. But if he did genuinely shift his first stream that much further back and started at nine o'clock, he could also just push his night stream back the exact same amount of time and get to bed that much earlier, like an actual normal person instead of you know staying up till one or two in the morning at the age of 42 as if that's completely normal or something no disrespect to anybody that's doing that at the age of 42 that's completely fine but i'm sure that you're actually a responsible adult who knows what they're capable of dsp is rolling out of bed 30 minutes before the stream at max and then acting like he's doing god's work or something blinky you're a complete idiot enjoy your ban saying still dumb show i literally just explained uh, my job is different from everyone else's. That if I got up at 7 a.m. and was streaming, you would just hear me talking and would wake everyone up in the house, right? He goes, oh, I'll tell my boss I can't get to work at 7 a.m. because I'm going to wake up my family. Uh, your job does not require you to, to talk loudly in your house, waking everyone up in the household. You could probably quietly get up and get ready for work and leave and not wake everybody else up, right? But you're an idiot. You don't listen to me, so go fuck yourself.
Okay. <clears throat> but your job also doesn't require you to talk loudly in your house, Diaz, but you could absolutely change your setup so that you don't have to talk nearly as loud as you do. Like I said, your microphone is three times as far as it really should be. Also, I think Blinky's point stands entirely whether or not your job is at home or not. The idea that you are incapable of doing something that's expected of you for work simply because you don't want to wake up your family is asinine. Because like I said, you're both adults and you would figure it out. That being said, shout out, obviously, that's all of the ridiculous excuses that DSP had to offer on why he couldn't possibly start any of his streams at an earlier time. And with that, we're going to take a look at some of the comments from my last video. So of course, it's big ups to the 60 skulls. Derward Mixklevich says, DSP, they're just there to make a paycheck. Also, DSP, hey guys, I need tips and support. I won't be able to play this anymore. And I always thought that that was one of the most ironic things about DSP is he is so quick to say that everybody else is there for the paycheck when the reality is it's him that's there for the paycheck. He's the person that's constantly talking about needing to be paid. He's the one that's constantly making it so that if people don't give him money, he's not going to give them the content. But everybody else is the problem, obviously. Dark Side of the Bright Side says, nothing like a cold cup of financial boardroom middle management meeting when you're trying to chill chill stream. Yeah, at this point, he might as well start showing off graphs and talking about KPIs. It's just as exciting. Joking aside, I have no idea why he thinks that anybody in his audience actually gives a shit about this. And anybody who is in his audience that cares about this is a very clearly a LARPer. And Jules Necro says he's not like other girls at uh, lol cows. Fur fur. And he'll make sure to tell you at every single junction possible. DSP is a completely unique style individual who is nothing like anybody else on the face of this planet. Of course, that's only true if you ignore the fact that he's just like all of those other lol cows in every way imaginable, if not worse in some cases. But you know who's not like the other girls? All of the people that watch this video, especially if you made it to the end. So hopefully I'll catch all of you guys in the next video, but until then, make sure that you check out other detractor content and dive deeper into that. Snortex. Ah!